Hey guys, welcome to History Facts. In this video we are going to talk about what is hygiene like for astronauts in space. Enjoy the video. Hollywood often paints a romanticized vision of space travel, but living in a gravity-free environment has dirty downsides. It takes a lot of extra work for an astronaut to tend to their personal hygiene in space. Sometimes, they're even instructed to do some not-so-sanitary things, like wear the same pair of underwear for a week. When thinking about hygiene in space, the first thing to consider is that there are no showers or sinks. Gravity makes common earthly devices like sinks totally impractical. Think about it, water falls down a faucet and into a drain. In space, the water would float away, and ultimately endanger both an astronaut's health and a spacecraft's expensive equipment. So, what is hygiene like for astronauts in space? Some astronauts live on the International Space Station, ISS, for months at a time. Without gravity, how do they brush their teeth, go to the bathroom, or take a shower? Hair is washed using shampoo, a towel, and a comb, but little to no water. The whole zero-gravity thing makes standard sinks and showers completely pointless in space. The water would float away instead of flowing down a faucet. In order to wash their hair, an astronaut uses a waterless shampoo that does not require rinsing and does not produce foam. Some water may be used to aid the process via direct application to the scalp, but it must be carefully dried with a towel afterward to prevent damage to equipment. If they brush their hair, an astronaut needs to be careful of any stray hairs that float away. Stray hairs can potentially get into an astronaut's eyes or be inhaled into their lungs. Using the bathroom requires leg straps and a vacuum. On average, it takes an astronaut about 10 extra minutes to use the restroom. Astronauts even have to go through space's version of potty training to make sure they are doing all the necessary steps. First, an astronaut must secure themselves to the toilet seat using special straps on their legs to make sure they do not float away. If they plan to urinate, the astronaut uses a personal urination funnel, which is attached to a hose on the wall and works like a vacuum. The vacuum's fan sucks up the liquid and dumps it into a tank. If the astronaut has to defecate, they need to put a special bag inside the toilet to hold the waste. Next, they use a vacuum to contain the waste and a fan to freshen the air. The closed bag is stored underneath the toilet until it can be safely disposed of. Dental hygiene practices are essentially identical to those on Earth. Brushing your teeth is perhaps even more important in space than on planet Earth. Due to atmospheric changes on a spacecraft, a cavity has the potential to be even more painful. Dental equipment is just about the same in space, an astronaut uses a regular toothbrush and toothpaste. However, they do not have a sink, and therefore no running water. To brush their teeth, a space station is rigged with tiny pieces of Velcro that hold capless toothpaste tubes for easy application. An astronaut can wet their toothbrush by using a straw in a water bag. Without a sink to spit in after they're done brushing, an astronaut either swallows the toothpaste, it's edible, or spits into a washcloth. Many crew members bring personal hygiene kits. Just like you would bring a toiletry bag on vacation, every astronaut is given a personal hygiene kit before taking off on a space mission. The kit includes everything that a space traveler will need to keep clean during their time away from Earth. These kits feature all the hygiene basics like deodorant, soap, hairbrush, toothpaste, toothbrush, dental floss, shavers, body cream, and lip balm. Astronauts can even select which brands of items they prefer to use. Female crew members receive an additional hygiene kit. In 1983, Sally Ride became the first American woman to travel into space. To prepare for her flight, NASA asked how many tampons she would need in her personal hygiene kit for the week-long mission. They asked if 100 tampons would be enough. Ride sarcastically informed them that half that amount would be just fine. To further illustrate NASA's unfamiliarity with female crew members, engineers added a full makeup assortment to their female astronauts' personal hygiene kit, figuring women would want to put on makeup during their space mission. 
The prototype for the kit included all the cosmetic basics like eyeshadow, blush, mascara, and eyeliner. Eventually, it was determined those items were not necessary. Solid waste is burned up in the atmosphere. Today, NASA has the filtration technology to recycle urine into safe drinking water. However, solid waste is not yet recyclable. So, what do they do with fecal matter? After an astronaut produces solid waste, it is sucked up into a sealed bag underneath the toilet. The actual toilet does not look like the typical household loo, it's actually just a metallic base that has a suction feature. The airtight sealed bag is stored in a tank with other trash until the tank is full. The waste is then placed in an unpiloted ship and sent into space. The spacecraft is ultimately burned up in the atmosphere upon reentry. Could there be a day in the future when fecal matter is recycled as well? Perhaps. Researchers are currently trying to figure out ways to utilize solid human waste. One idea is to use fecal matter to line the walls of a spacecraft to protect astronauts from toxic cosmic rays. Showering is accomplished by using a mixture of rinse-less soap and water. Showering in space is more or less like applying lotion to your skin. Astronauts use a pouch that contains a mixture of rinseless soap and water. It is the same kind of soap used in hospitals for patients who are unable to shower. It is also the same mixture and method that astronauts use to wash their hands. An astronaut shower is more like a sponge bath than an earthbound shower with running water. They squeeze out a portion of the soap or water mixture and rub it onto their bodies. Whatever water is left in the air is repurposed by the spacecraft. Unsurprisingly, the one thing astronauts miss the most while on a space mission is running water. It is a luxury that we take for granted. Imagine not showering for months. Jennifer Levasu, who is a curator in the museum's space history department, said that many astronauts from the ISS describe the odor of the space station as having a lived-in smell. Dirted clothing is thrown out so it can burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. There are no laundry machines for astronauts up in space, they would use way too much water. So how do space travelers keep their clothes clean? There is no magical solution or way to wash clothes in space. Some space missions can last for months or longer, so there isn't a lot of extra room for clothes. Therefore, astronauts must wear their clothes for as long as possible, basically until the smell gets to be too much to bear. At the ISS, astronauts are told to wear their underwear about a week before changing it. Once a garment has reached its maximum tolerable stink level, astronauts throw out their clothes with the spacecraft's other waste. The garbage is placed in a vessel, which burns up once it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Each crew member is allowed three towels per day. NASA has a lot of rules for astronauts to follow regarding personal hygiene and full-body cleansing. After an astronaut takes a shower, they need to make sure to dry their body and the shower area completely. Even small droplets of floating water can find a way into equipment or an astronaut's lungs. A full-body cleanse is essential to maintain proper hygiene. Each crew member is given three towels per day, one wet towel and two dry towels. All of the towels are bath-sized. In addition, wipes can be used as needed. They contain both disinfectant and lotion. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and comment.